what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the 90210 show brought to you by Massive Lapey. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my lovely, beautiful, coquettish girlfriend, Carol. How are you doing, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a good week here. I feel like I've gained about 15,000 pounds <laughs> right? from Thanksgiving, or as we say, <laughs> that doesn't sound that doesn't sound like a turkey deal it does but the way a turkey sounds is gross I, like, I don't like it okay now you sound like you're like i don't know like doing yeah yeah but i don't know how to say that <laughs> like a, a war cry yeah is what you're trying to say thank you she's trying to be pc i i, I was trying to find a pc way to say that yes. that's right well carol Speaking of politically correctness, we have been hit by a big old silver car of political correctness, <laughs> right. much like one of the characters in this episode of 90210. Why don't you tell us? Is that how it starts? No. Okay. No, it starts in the video store, right? Yeah, it starts with her in Blockbuster, but they can't say it's Blockbuster, so it's <laughs> lackluster video. Right. So it's Brenda and Kelly and Donna trying to pick out a movie. And they see David Silver. Hanging out in the adult videos. Yeah. He's not even old enough to rent an adult video. What is he doing back there? I don't know. Yeah, he's 17, right? Yeah. Maybe he's, maybe the the guy on the counter uh, lets him do it for in exchange for dance lessons or something. <laughs> maybe. It's weird to me, too. Like, they just have their adult video section out in the open. Mm-hmm. No curtain. Yeah, like everywhere I've ever been has a curtain. There's a, a not blockbuster video by by our house. Uh, I'm not going to name the, the name of the video store, but it's off brand. It's 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 privately owned. Uh-huh. And they have a, a section labeled mature and it's got a curtain. You go into a little room, right? I've never actually been back there, but the first time I saw it, I thought it said nature. <laughs> and I said to my friend who I was calling that I was with, I was like, why do they have, why do they have the nature movies like <laughs> separated? And he's like, what? I was like the nature section. I guess that's maybe that's when I, I first realized I needed glasses. <laughs> he says, that's just mature, not nature. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, so now, uh, I, we call, x-rated videos or whatever nature videos it's like a little inside joke with us i love it so david is over there taken in the sights and uh donna walks over and like Mm -hmm. hey you having fun way to embarrass the kid like i would have just acted like i didn't see him just she's the reason he has to be in that section right just like uh you know brenda should have acted like she didn't see Rick, who was also in the video That's store. Right. Dean Kane himself. Superman was there. And and you know, her girlfriends are like, Oh, he's definitely gonna see you. You have to say something. Yeah. He was on his way out. He was at the checkout counter. Mm-hmm. Let the man leave. Yeah, I don't understand where they get that from. Oh, you're you're not gonna be able to avoid seeing him in this video store. Because it's not like there's, you know, not rows and rows of movies to hide behind. Right. <sighs> The entire thing is built for a game of hide and seek. <laughs> right. I've, Carol and I have played many a game of hide and seek in Blockbuster. Yep. Hide, hide the hide the video. <laughs> so she goes over and says hi, and he's all like, "Oh, I waited for you for so long." Mm-hmm. And she keeps up her stupid French accent. Right. Oh, hello, Dick. Wouldn't Wouldn't you just give up the game at this point? Yeah, I, I think when she saw him in the video store, she should have been like, hey, uh, just, you know. Or she could have been, you know what she should have done? She should have been like, oh, uh, my name's Glenda. You you must be thinking of my twin sister, Brenda. <laughs> right. The French one. Because, <laughs> yeah, twin sisters could definitely be, you sure. know, one's American and one's French. Sure. That would make sense. No, it's identical cousins. Like, uh, <laughs> like what's her name? Uh not Haley Mills, uh, Shirley Temple, right? She right. Was, was I don't that, know. Is that the one? No. no. Patty Duke. There you go. Yeah. Identical cousins. And, and Javon. Right? Yeah. I know that song. 
I don't know the show, but I know the song. I used to watch the show sometimes. I nick yeah, because that that's because like, you're a grandpa. Anyway. One was into rock and roll and stuff, and the other one was uh, all into ballet. One was Beethoven, one was Eddie Money. Overdosing on fentanyl and stuff. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> so, Rick insists on taking Brenda for a tour of L.A. because he's now going mm-hmm. to USC. Yeah. U- University of Southern California. And instead of, you the know, Trojans like being the condoms. a... What? So the Trojans like the condoms. Right. Instead of being, you know, a good girlfriend and saying, no, sorry, I can't right. do it. I have a she, boyfriend. She agrees to let him take her on this tour. <laughs> like a fucking idiot. Yeah, take me on a tour of my hometown. It'll work out just peachy. Right. It'll work out peach pity. Right. And then, like, he calls her house and asks her mother if he can speak to her niece. Yeah, because that's from she, Paris. She came up with the excuse that she's seeing her family, the Walshes, her aunt and uncle, and her cousin, Brandon. What an idiot. So, yeah, she answers the phone with her French accent. Mm-hmm. And her whole family is just staring at her. And then the, it was kind of funny. She hangs up. She's leaving the room, like, hey. Like yeah. She's not going to say anything. They are like Brenda <laughs> at the same time. So, yeah. So she continues to pretend to be French for, I don't know, 45 minutes of their date. Yeah. Well, he takes her to the peach pit. Like, what the hell is if I went to Los Angeles, I wouldn't think like, OK, someone's going to take me on a tour of the city. What, what are we going to see? Some celebrities houses. We're going to see uh you know, some iconic movie studios. We're right. going to go to the, uh, you know, uh, Grauman's Chinese Theater and see the handprints in the in the cement. No, let's go to a diner. <laughs> well, he, according to him, he was starving. And all of his fraternity brothers said, this is the best place in the world. Right. How, is, how is Nat ever struggling? Remember when they were going to uh, tear down his shithole and build a mall? Yeah. Like, how... How is he ever struggling financially? I don't know. I don't know, but I mean, it, I think it ebbs and flows, and, and this is just, you know, this is the good it crew. Ebb. Right. Or is it a flow? <laughs> What's the good one? Ebb or flow? I don't know. All right. <laughs> but uh, he insists on sitting at the counter, so Brandon ends up uh, waiting on them, which mm-hmm. is no good. Um, and Nat... Well, at least Brand- Brandon catches on... Pr- much faster. Yeah, but Nat walks up, and, and eventually Brenda's just like, forget it, and tells the truth, because <laughs> it was just too much. I would have told the truth right away, but whatever. And Rick was like, look, I liked Brenda Dubois, <laughs> but I think I could fall in love with Brenda Walsh. What the fuck? I don't know. It's, I quite, mean, a, he, it's quite a line. He is, he is a seriously good-looking dude who is going to USC... And he has to stay, like, obsessed with this liar, (laughs) like, high school girl. Um, It doesn't really make sense. He's got Terry Hatcher waiting in the wings. Right? But she and and Dylan were kind of bickering to begin with because they, oh, the um, SAT people think he cheated. Yeah. What the fuck? That makes no sense. Does it make sense to you? Do you think this would actually happen? I don't. I don't know. I don't know because they they all they gave us another piece of information. At first, I was like, "This is dumb," mm-hmm. but then they gave us another piece of information because they were like, "You took your test at a school that wasn't the school you go to," which is sort of you know suspect. And they said maybe you did that to pay off somebody to take your test. But the big thing is is that his test score because this is the second time he's t- he took the SATs. His test score went up 300 points. Yeah. That's a big jump. So I can see why it might have been red flagged. Although, honestly, I can't imagine that they would just arbitrarily say, you cheated. Right. Because your test score went up too too much. What if he had been getting tutoring and you know studying and stuff like that uh, after taking it the first time? And the reason it, it, it's so much higher than the first time is because that's when Brenda was in the hospital for that breast cancer scare thing. And, she, yeah, he had to leave in the middle yeah. of his test. He never finished the test, which I don't even know how he'd have a recorded score if he didn't actually finish the test. Well, I mean, they took what he turned in. I guess. But I, you would think there'd be some sort of, like, 
not a trial, but like, you know what I mean? Like some sort of committee. Investigation. Yeah, some sort of committee that would, you know, talk, at least talk to him. Yeah. And not just send him a letter and be like, hey, we think you fucking cheated. So we're not going to accept your score. Yeah. So basically, Jim says to him that the easiest thing to do is just retake the test. Mm-hmm. And he refuses to do it because Dylan he's is standing on principle. He's a very prideful mm-hmm. idiot. Says I didn't cheat on the SATs. I cheated on Brenda, but right, cheat on the SATs. So Brenda, you know, is already pushing him on that, and um, then you know Rick is in the picture, and everything's just not not quite going right for them. Her heart is all a flutter. <laughs> so I thought that they broke up when um, he he decides to tell her. That he did see someone over the mm-hmm. summer, which it seemed to me that she already knew that. Like they talked about how they both had had you know stuff over the summer. It was certainly implied, at least. Mm-hmm. She basically said she didn't want to know, right? So now she's mad because he didn't tell her because he's like, you know, I feel like a hypocrite because I'm I'm upset because they're calling me a liar, but I did lie to you because I did mm-hmm. see somebody. But I mean, the thing is, what he lied about, he's still lying about because he didn't. He didn't tell her that it was yeah. Kelly. Yeah, because she's like, "Well, who was it?" And he's like, "Does that matter?" <laughs> it's like it. You know, it should to yeah, her. You know, it, it would, would matter. It would definitely matter. So, I kind of thought they were already broken up by the time she went out with Rick because they had this fight before then. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really think they were broken up, but it seemed it seemed bad. And then Rick kisses her mm-hmm. while they're on their date. Yeah. So then later that night, Dylan is typing a letter to the SAT committee or whatever. <laughs> and she's like, this is just ridiculous mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. So um, she tells him the truth that she went out with Rick. Again. Yeah. And they break up. Yeah. Finally. And that's when they finally break up. And then she calls Kelly right away. Yeah, because it's her best friend. And says, I, I broke up with Dylan and then Dylan walks in, and she's like, oh, I got to call you back. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he immediately goes to Kelly, who who the whole episode has just been painting her room. Yeah. Many different colors. Hers black. Yeah. And she's experimenting with blue and green. It's weird. I guess that's what people with money do. They just, you know, waste just money on their rooms. all kinds of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Like three different kinds of paint. Sure. That's why the paint industry is rolling in dough. <laughs> Right, Sherman Williams has got fuck you money. <laughs> but um, I mean, we know they're going to be together. But like you said, I think you're right. They're going to keep it like hidden for a while. They'll, they'll stretch it out because yeah. it's a soap opera. <laughs> and uh, the other thing going on in this episode, Andrea got the other thing. There's like 17 things going. Yeah, on there this are. Um, but Andrea gets hit by a car, a hit and run. Yeah, this is a pretty simple storyline because they largely ignore it. Yeah. I'm guessing that it will come back later. Well, she's going to be in a wheelchair, so, yeah. Because yeah, she, she's she got crippled. both her legs broken. She's crippled for life. Not for life. <laughs> for a month. The way they filmed it was really, it was really poor, the way they filmed it. Because it looks like, and I mean, obviously, they can't do a real stunt or anything. But it looks it looks like the car is coming down. Then they we see her and she's got this big like surprised face. Oh like very <laughs> comical. And then they go to the car and it looks like the car just like basically I didn't even think it hit her at first. I thought it just brushed her. Uh huh. Maybe she impacted the side slightly. Like where she just got like where it kinda like bumped her. But it knocked her down. And then I was like, oh, okay, so it bumped her and it knocked her down. Maybe she's got, like, maybe she hit her head or something on the pavement. And then they're like, two broken legs. Yeah. It's like, what? That's like she was tossed aside or something. That that accident didn't look as bad as they wanted us to think it was. I mean, I guess we're supposed to assume her legs got run over. <sighs> maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it was not good. I would have rather seen a, a big rubbery, uh, like you know, doll get to, you know, hit the hood of the car and get tossed or something. Right. That would have been cool. So then, you know, you were, you were theorizing that it's Brandon's girlfriend. Do you still think that since they didn't do anything with it? No. Okay. I was, cause I was in my mind, I'm like, they're, they're going to break up somehow. Mm -hmm. She seems too perfect. 
She's got to mess up because it can't be anything Brandon does. Of course not. Can't Golden Boy Brandon can't do any wrong. So she has to do something to mess this up. And yeah. I don't know what it's going to be, but it seemed like they were sort of alluding to it with the way she was like, oh, I heard about, uh, what's her name, Andrea, and like, oh, thank God, she's going to be okay. And right. Like that. But they didn't do anything within this episode, so I think, but I think that car's coming back. I think, well, because they, they very clearly showed us what the car looks like, mm-hmm. so I think that's, she's going to see it again. Maybe Brandon will follow it or something. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll find out that it's uh, Dean Kane. <laughs> Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> uh, but, you know, his little girlfriend is just a freshman. Even though she's older than the rest of the cast. Right. Because she's Audrey from National Lampoon's Vacation. So, you know, they might just break up at the end of the year when he's going to college. Yeah, that's true. We'll see. That, that could be one of those things where it's like, you know, oh, let's try long distance for five seconds. But they're not even going to be long distance because they're not going out of state. So <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But I'll be, I'll be surrounded by pussy. That's kind of like long distance. And seems a, it seems a long distance to wade through all these girls to get back to you. <laughs> and speaking of uh, pussy, Donna and David are getting hot and heavy. Oh, yeah. And then she... Then Aaron Spelling steps in and says, right. I said no. Like, he's making out, like, they're making out, and he pulls away and says, isn't this the part where you usually stop me <laughs> and tell me to go home? Like, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. She didn't stop you. He's the only guy to ever pull out, you know, in this situation. (laughs) So she's feeling all kinds of, like, you know, pressure to have sex, but Mm -hmm. guilty because she kind of wants to and back and forth. And, like, Mm -hmm. her parents are out of town. So there's that added. We're supposed to be getting divorced. Yeah, they never really did anything with that. (laughs) But, like, at one point, she tells him that he can stay the night if they really just sleep. Mm-hmm. And they fall asleep. Yep. He, he goes to sleep. Like right. he says, he doesn't actually try to get any farther. Because he's such a good boyfriend. I mean, at least in this in this area. Yeah. Um, I mean, he cheats on her, so he's not great. But um, she has a nightmare about her virginity. And uh, <laughs> she's she's in a wedding dress. And I, I think it's a confirmation dress. Okay, well, she's in a christening dress or whatever it is, a confirmation dress. It looks like a, well, yeah, I guess it could be a, it could be. First communion. Could yeah, be because first communion. The, the priest they went right into gave her her first communion. She mentioned that. So I think yeah, that's the dress she was wearing. It could be a communion dress. But she's with a bunch of little girls, mm-hmm. too. Who are and, also wearing the dress. Yeah, and she's talking to the priest about, hey, should I, you know, should I let, should I let my boyfriend penetrate me? Oh, God. And he's like, I don't know, you know, whatever you think. God will always love you, but your parents will hate you. <laughs> Something like that. So and, and, yeah, so then she wakes up. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And she's like, get out. Yeah, she wakes him up and tells him he has to go home. Poor David. <laughs> I don't know how they stay together. Get one of your get one of your X-rated tapes and go jerk off. Right. Oh. So she actually goes and talks to this priest and he gave her some really surprisingly good and gentle advice. Yeah. Like, he said that, you know, your virginity is a gift and you need to decide if David's the one you want to give it to. He mm-hmm. wasn't like, it's a gift to be safe for your husband and your husband only. He says, she says, but what about the church's stance on fellatio? And he says, I'd love to tell you the church's stance on fellatio, but I don't know what fellatio is. So she had to show him. Wow. That's a, that, I don't want to take credit for it. That is a Rowan Atkinson slash Mr. Bean joke. So That is terrible. The priest is like telling that story and then he's like, so, you know, from that point on, you know, since, cause he, he knew, he's like, so he knew what it was at that point. So he's like, so from that point on, you know, whenever a young bride comes to me and asks that question, I always tell her that, uh, you know, I would love to tell you the church <laughs> Stance on fellatio, but I don't know what fellatio is. That's terrible, Mark. Yeah, it's a funny joke. It's not mine. Ugh. I don't care. It's so ugh. Yeah. Um, Ron Atkinson's very funny. But she just decides that she's not going to sleep with him. She says, let's wait until 90210 the college years. <laughs> 
And then maybe I'll see. It depends on if my dad is still producing the show. <laughs> right. So, and that's where they leave off. They're going to just wait and you see. You know, you, you missed you missed something very important, though. What? You missed them uh, speaking with Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. That was ridiculous. They go to some benef- AIDS benefits uh, with R- Rosie O'Donnell's hosting with 15 kids in the audience and one camera just right at her face for some <laughs> reason. And she's like, well, I was going to tell you about uh, my my first time, but... Uh, the producer said no fisting stories. Oh, jeez. So, because she's a lesbian. I so, know. But, uh... <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you about yours. So, she's talking to, she goes up to, first she goes up to, of course she only goes up to the people that are on the show. Right. But she goes up to Brandon and Audrey from, from vacation and says, hey, have you two had sex yet? And they said that they have, but not with each other. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but whatever. <laughs> right. It definitely seems like they were having sex. If they've both already had sex and they've been dating a couple months, it's very unrealistic that they wouldn't be having sex. Yeah. I mean, they're not virgins and they've been dating a couple months. Once you lose your virginity, it's like you're going to have sex with someone you're in a serious relationship yeah. with. You know, I mean, I understand, like, if you've gone out, like, two or three dates, doesn't mean you're going to have sex with, who, who, you know, the, that person. But after a couple months. Well, and, like, last episode, I mean, they were, like, making out in bed. Oh, yeah. Hardcore. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I don't get this that. This show is very squeamish about the sexuality of it. It, it, it wants to lean into it because it wants to titillate its teenage audience. But it also wants to. It also wants to be very hands off. Yeah, like it's. It feels. It's like an uncle telling a sex story or something <laughs> like that. It feels creepy about it, but it still wants to get the information out there. Right. So yeah, that was that was awkward. And then they ask Donna and David, and of course, you know, Donna says she's waiting, and Rosie O'Donnell's like. You know, good for you. Your mm-hmm. parents are doing a great job raising you. Don't let him pressure you. Mm-hmm. Men are evil. Yeah. <laughs> Only date women. <laughs> right. Uh, so then, that is, so that's pretty much it with the Donna and David story. Yeah. Uh, the, I think the only one we're missing is Steve. Oh, yeah. Stephen M. Sanders. So, you and know his, how... And his freshman buddy. You know how he got that key so he could cheat? The one we've never done anything with. Apparently, he never did anything with it either till now. Right. So now he's failing all his classes. Like, like this is news. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, we knew that. He did really bad on the SATs, and he's not doing well in school, and he won't get a scholarship to USC, and he must get a scholarship to USC, because that's where all of his family went. Why can't he just pay to go to USC? That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying, in reality... His mom would be like, here's the, the whatever, I can't remember her, his mom's name. Here's the Beverly Sanders Memorial Library. I, I've given you, you know, $20 million to build it or whatever. Right. Give my son an education. But instead, he gets his freshman buddy who's supposedly... Oh, he's like, I'm the best hacker in the world. Yeah. I, I, I can hack computers all day long. All I need is the password. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. They call the company that makes the computer, and they're like, I need a list of your passwords. And they're like, oh, yeah, here you go. Jester. Jester is the, the password, yeah. We're big fans of Top Gun. <laughs> so he gets in, and he's about to change Steve's grade. He changes one of them. From a D to a B. And then it freezes. It's like a, re- it's like a reverse... A breast enhancement. Oh, jeez. Like, he goes from a D to a B. And he's like, it could just be a computer glitch, but, you know, they also could have, you know, set an alarm with this password. Mm-hmm. What? Have you ever yeah. heard of such a thing? That sounds ridiculous. They they don't know anything about computers. Yeah. And then he's like, we got to get out of here. Like, yeah. like the police are already coming. <laughs> he does say that, too. <laughs> like, he's shaggy. <laughs> we got to get out of here, Scoop. <laughs> and oh. Steve goes, Roar? <laughs> So, yeah, his plan has failed yet again. So they run out of the room. And I bet they're going to get busted for this somehow. 
There will be some big investigation. Yeah. And the lead detective is going to drive up in a silver car. Right. <laughs> no, I don't know. They'll they'll figure something out. But Steve, Steve, you're not going to USC. Sorry. No. You're going to California University or whatever fictional university that everyone goes to. Yep. All, all your little buddies are going to be there with you. It'll yep. be okay. Cal University. Actually, no. University of California. That's Cal. Okay. So, yeah, I think California University doesn't exist. Right. So, that, I think that's their made-up school name. Okay. That's where they're going. That is the episode, though, of 90210. It is. What would you think of the episode overall? Well, I mean, at least it was not a very special episode this I time. That's what I was thinking, too. <laughs> I, it's nice to be back to the just the innocent drama of teenage lives. I like the soap opera-iness. And I'm really, really, really glad that Brenda and Dylan finally broke up. Yeah. And it, it ends with Dylan and Kelly making it hardcore out. kissing. Yeah. With her pl- paint splattered overalls. Do you think uh, Rick's going to become a regular character now? I think he, he'll be on another episode, maybe two. Oh, well, that's it, huh? I, yeah, I don't think he's going to stay long. I don't know when. How many seasons are we in to that Lois and Clark show? I think this is the third season of it. Okay. Yeah, he's busy then. (laughs) So I think it started in 1993, I think. And we're in 1992 with these episodes right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't didn't say the date at the beginning, but uh, currently we're in 1995. Right. But the the 90210 episodes were, were... watching right now are from 92 so i think this is a i think this is around the time he would have gotten the lois and clark show okay i don't think it started maybe it started in 94 though maybe this is only his second season i don't watch a lot of the show i don't right. i don't watch I, I watch every once in a while but i don't want i don't watch the episodes religiously so i'm not sure how far along they are mostly i just watch for terry hatcher and then you tell me i can't so so at most we're looking at like the rest of the season probably yeah, I don't think he'd be. I don't think he'd hold on much longer than that. Makes sense. But he is, you know. He's like you said, he's a good-looking guy. Yeah, future star Dean Kane. <laughs> so you know, we'll watch just uh, just for that. Yeah, sounds good. Well, we well, can watch some uh, some Superman now. Oh, okay, it's okay now. Yeah, you can look at Terry Hatcher. I'll look at uh, Dean Kane. What about Perry White? Who the hell is that? Lane Smith. What about Jimmy Olsen? There's another girl on that show called Cat or something like that. Okay. Who's, who's also decent looking. Okay. She's no Terry Hatcher, but. <laughs> Very few are. All right. All right. Well, that is our episode for the week. Carol, tell the people what the people need to people. <laughs> All right, people. You need to uh, tell your friends and, um, you mm-hmm. know, write us at latefee1994aol.com. That's also helpful. Visit our website, www.retrolatefee.com. The least you can do. And uh, give us the stars. Yep. All right. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.